Welcome to Akshara Foundation's video on decimals. At Akshara, we have developed a maths kit which will help your students understand the concept of decimals. You can use the circle with fraction parts, decimal set, play money notes and coins, and decimal place value strips as teaching aids. Start by revising the concept of fractions. Here is a circle which is divided into 10 equal parts. If Mamta picks just one part, she has taken one out of a total of 10 parts. It is written as 1 upon 10. If Tony picks two parts, he has 2 upon 10 of the circle. Ravi takes 3 upon 10 parts. Similarly, Saida takes 4 upon 10 of the circle. The denominator tells us how many parts the whole is divided into. These are parts of a whole and are called fractions. 10 upon 10 is one whole. Introduce the decimal set from the math kit. The large yellow square from the tray is one whole. This square, when divided into 10 equal parts, gives 10 equal strips. One part out of 10 parts is one tenth of the whole, written as 1 upon 10. Three parts out of 10 is 3 tenths of the whole or 3 upon 10. 7 parts out of 10 is 7 tenths. Each of these 10 strips, when further divided into 10 equal parts, give 10 multiplied by 10, which is 100 equal parts. Each part is 1 hundredth of the whole or 1 upon 100. It is also called 1 hundredth. 6 parts out of 100 parts is written as 6 upon 100 and is called 6 hundredth. If we have 27 parts out of 100, we write it as 27 upon 100 or 27 hundredth. Fractions with denominator of 10, 100, 1000 are called decimal fractions. Write the fractions 3 upon 10 and 3 upon 100 on the blackboard. The numerator in both fractions indicate the same number of parts. Are these fractions equal? Ask students to represent each fraction with the help of the decimal set. It will be clear that 3 upon 10 is greater than 3 upon 100. Where the numerator is the same, the fraction with the greater denominator is the smaller fraction. The more the number of total parts, the smaller each portion becomes. Thus, 3 upon 10 is greater than 3 upon 100. If we have 30 parts out of 100 parts, we write it as 30 upon 100, which is also called as 30 hundredth. These 30 squares are 3 strips of 10 each. We can as well say 3 upon 10 is the same as 30 upon 100. Ask students to represent 20 upon 100, 60 upon 100, 80 upon 100, both as hundredths and tenths. Give some fractions and ask students to represent them using the decimal set. Let students now understand the link between decimal fractions and place value, since both are based on the power of 10. The math kit has currency notes in denominations of 1, 10, 100 and 1000 rupees, as well as 10 paise and 1 paise coins. With these, you can revise the concept of regrouping by tens. We can exchange 1000 rupee note for 10 hundred rupee notes, 100 rupee note for 10 10 rupee notes, 1 10 rupee note for 10 1 rupee notes. 1 rupee is equal to 100 paise. 1 rupee can be exchanged for 10 10 paise coins. So, 1 10 paise coin is written as a fraction 1 upon 10 or 1 tenth of a rupee. 4 10 paise coins are represented as 4 upon 10 or 4 tenth of a rupee. 
9 10 paise coins are represented as 9 upon 10 or 9 tenths of a rupee. 1 rupee can also be exchanged for 100 paise. 5 1 paise coins are represented as 5 upon 100 or as 5 hundredth of a rupee. And 15 paise is written as 15 upon 100 or called 15 hundredths. Let us take some more examples with play money. How much money do we have here? We have 500 rupee notes, 7 10 rupee notes and 2 1 rupee notes. This is read as 572. Here, 5 is in the hundredths place, 7 in the tens place and 2 in the ones place. In the math kit, yellow strips represent digits in the units place, blue strips represent digits in the tens place, green strips represent digits in the hundredths place and finally, red strips represent digits in the thousands place. Ask a student to place the appropriate strips to represent 572, one below the other, starting with the digit in the highest place value. The strips must be aligned to the right. Now, let us add three 10 paise coins to this amount. These three coins are lesser than a rupee. Its value is three tenths of a rupee. This number now has a whole part and a fractional part. We can write it as 572 and 3 upon 10. The fraction 3 upon 10 is represented as 0.3. Here, the face value of 3 is 3 and the place value of 3 is 3 upon 10. The composite number is 572 Point 3, where the point is called the decimal point. This point separates the whole number from the fractional or the decimal part. To represent decimal numbers, the math kit has grey colour place value strips from 0 0.0 to 0 0.9 to express decimal numbers in the tenths place. Place the strip marked 0.3 below the yellow strip. Add 5 1 paise coins to this amount. 5 represents 5 hundredths of a rupee. 5 is in the hundredth place. Its face value is 5 and place value is 1 upon 100 and its position is to the right of the tenths place. To express decimal numbers in the hundredth place, the math kit has decimal place value strips marked from 0 0.00 to 0 0.09. Ask students to observe how the number is represented with the strips. Students must observe how the number is written and read as 572.35 rupees. The number is not read as 0.35. Numbers to the right of the decimal point are read as individual digits since they represent fractional quantities. Now, if we had only 5 paise and no rupee notes or whole numbers, this number has to be written and read as 0 0.05 rupees since it is 5 hundredth of a rupee. Absence of a whole number to the left of the decimal point is represented by a zero. 68 paise is written as 0 0.68 rupees. Students must remember that the first place to the right of the decimal point is the tenth place. The second place to the right is the hundredth place. Write some decimal numbers on the board. Let students work in small groups and represent these numbers using play money. Once they have understood this, ask them to represent the amounts using place value strips. Give them a clue that the first one should be read as 40.05.
How can a decimal number be expressed as a decimal fraction? For example, take 0 0.7. Here, 7 is in the tenth place since it is to the immediate right of the decimal point. This means 7 parts out of 10 and it is written as 7 upon 10. What about 1.23? Here, 1 is a whole number. 2 is in the tenths place while 3 is in the hundredths place. 2 tenths and 3 hundredths are the same as 23 hundredths or 23 upon 100. So we represent it as 1 and 23 upon 100. Give plenty of examples and ask students to solve them for them to get more practice. Students can now convert decimal fractions to decimal numbers. 6 upon 10 is written as 0 0.6 and 16 upon 100 is written as 0 0.16. Here are some more examples for practice. If students understood how to rewrite decimal fractions as decimal numbers, then they are ready for the next step. How do we tell which is the greater of the two decimal numbers? 1.20 or 1.09? We start with comparing the digit in the highest place value, which is the digit in the extreme left place. Since there is 1 in the units place in both the numbers, we move 1 place to the right. Compare the digits in the tenths place. 1.20 has 2 tenths, whereas 1.09 has no digit in the tenths place. It is evident that 1.20 is the bigger number. Students can verify this by representing both numbers using the strips and squares from the decimal set. If a fraction is not a decimal fraction, can it be converted into a decimal fraction? Here is a cake cut into five equal pieces. If Mamta eats two of the pieces, we say that Mamta has eaten two-fifth or two parts out of five parts of the cake. How can we show this in the decimal form? Decimal fractions must have a denominator of 10 or 100 or 1000. We must now convert the denominator into 10. 5 multiplied by 2 gives us 10. Multiply both the denominator as well as the numerator by 2 so that we do not change the value of the original fraction. We now get 4 upon 10. So, four tenths of the whole cake was eaten by Mamta. Now that we have a decimal fraction, it is easy to express 4 upon 10 as a decimal number. Expressed in the decimal form, 0 0.4 of the cake was eaten by Mamta. Let students attempt a few more such problems where they have to express fractions as decimal numbers. The math kit lends itself to working efficiently in groups. Students will now enjoy solving decimal problems given in the textbook.